there's been an escalating conflict on the edge of Europe. Artillery attacks, airstrikes, fighter jets coming down, civilian buildings being damaged and over 100 killed. A historic dispute between Azerbaijan and Armenia has reignited and a watching world is asking, can full-scale war be avoided? Russia, the US and France are calling for an immediate ceasefire, but they know, ceasefire or not, fundamentally this is being driven by a long-standing dispute that was never resolved. And this is why. Here on the map, you can see Armenia to the west, Azerbaijan to the east. Both were part of the Soviet Union before it disintegrated in the early 90s. And right where we see the two meet is an enclave called Nagorno-Karabakh. In the eyes of the international community, it's part of Azerbaijan. But its population is now almost entirely ethnic Armenian. In the late 80s and early 90s, Armenia and Azerbaijan fought a war over Nagorno-Karabakh. And despite the UN calling on Armenia to withdraw its troops, by 1994, Azerbaijan had lost. Nagorno-Karabakh declared independence and became part of Armenia in all but name. So, 26 years on, why is the escalation happening now? Well, the language has hardened. Here's Azerbaijan's president. We only have one condition, he says. Armenian armed forces must unconditionally, fully and immediately leave our lands. Armenia has no intention of agreeing. Here's its president. What they are trying to do is to force Armenians out of that, of the land that they historically lived, even before the Azerbaijan as a, as a, as a republic existed. So, well, in my vocabulary, it's called ethnic cleansing. And this intensification can be explained by looking internally and externally. First, domestic politics. In Armenia, this has been happening. Unfortunately, the Armenian prime minister, I, I think, has been forced by his own domestic politics to back away from the framework agreement that had been negotiated for years between his country and Azerbaijan. And then this is the situation in Azerbaijan. With the social problems, with the falling price of oil, with the reforms that are needed in the economy, the war probably is the best possible outcome to make sure that public rallies around the leader. As well as that, Azerbaijan's booming oil sector has given it added income and influence. And if domestic politics is one vital factor, the differing approaches of Turkey and Russia is another. Turkey has been vociferous in its support of Azerbaijan. Here's its president. The path to a lasting peace requires the withdrawal of Armenians from every inch of Azeri land they are occupying. The constant efforts to slander Turkey will not save the Armenian government. And this is part of a broader pattern. Turkey's willingness to oppose major powers is on show from Libya to northern Syria, to gas drilling in the eastern Med, to migration into Europe, and now Azerbaijan too. In this case, France is unimpressed, accusing Turkey of warlike messages which have removed Azerbaijan's inhibitions. And certainly, Azerbaijan's been emboldened by Turkey's support. Equally important, as reported by Reuters here, has been Russia seeking to mediate rather than overtly taking sides. And given Russia has a military base in Armenia, that too will embolden Azerbaijan. Put all of those factors together, and whatever the rights and wrongs, you arrive at a moment of high risk. Mohamed Ayoub of Michigan State University argues there are too many external fingers in this caucus pie. It has the potential to turn into a major regional conflict. And there's one more worrying dimension to this. Today, France has confirmed jihadist fighters from Syria have been located in Nagorno-Karabakh. As President Macron puts it... This is a very serious new fact, which changes the situation. Syria itself provides evidence of the catastrophic consequences of a local conflict becoming a far greater proxy battle. France and others are desperate to avoid this here. For all of these reasons, this has already become about stopping the conflict now and stopping its return. The first part appears likely. If Russia, France and the US want a ceasefire, well, you wouldn't bet against it. But that doesn't resolve the core issue that the world considers Nagorno-Karabakh part of Azerbaijan and yet Armenia controls it. If anything good comes of this ugly escalation, it will be that the search for a lasting resolution is given the extra urgency it needs.